gets better every step of the way. How do you expect a man to concentrate on what he's doing with smells like these coming from the kitchen? I've been expecting you. Have you finished your packing, son? All through. Why do you bother to bake cakes when they taste so good like this? Seems to me we've been over that before. You sure you have everything? Toothbrush? Haven't missed a thing. And nobody ever remembers everything. Usually it's something pretty big and obvious. Shaving kit? Pack that first thing. <laughs> Use Dad this morning. Oh, there's the door. I'll get it. come to say goodbye. Oh, hello, Dr. Goodrich. How nice of you to come. Hello, Mrs. Sherman. Well, I couldn't let this boy get away without seeing him again. Of course not. Ed's down at the barn. He'll want to see the pastor, too. Why don't you call him, son? No, I'll go by down there as I leave. I don't have but a minute. Well, that's our ring. You answer it, Mark. It'll be for you. Isn't it strange, Dr. Goodrich? From the time they're born, you know the day will come and they'll leave. But it's still a shock. I guess it's uh, always that way, Miss Sherman. It's Miss Fulbright for you, Mom. Tell her the pastor is here and ask if I can call her back. Oh, no, please, you go ahead. Well, very well, will you excuse me? Well, Mom's been baking a cake. Looks like it's chocolate. Bet it'll be good. Mark, I've uh, brought you a little book that's meant a lot to me. I hope it'll be helpful to you. Thank you, Dr. Goodrich. I'm sure that it will. These are going to be interesting years. We wish we can stay in touch with you. Well, I'm not much on letters, but I'll try. Oh, it's not so important that you write me. But you keep those letters coming home. Mark. It is important, though, that you stay in touch with the church, wherever you are. Yes, sir. I want to speak to your father. I go out to the barn this way, don't I? That's right. Good luck in everything, Mark. Thank you, Dr. Goodrich. We'll be thinking of you, and tell your mother goodbye. Yes, sir. Bye. That's what you call working. I want a job around here. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, slipping up on an old man like me. Hello, Ed. How are you? Fine. Well, don't bother. Mark's at the house. Let's go on up. Oh, I just come from up there. Well, then, stay and visit with me a while. You lonesome already, Ed? Yes, but more than that, I'm, I'm, I'm troubled. Troubled? About what? Well, you know, kids are like seeds. You plant them and do all you can do for them. Then there comes a time of waiting. You just have to sit back and wait to see if what you've done is good. Well, the time of waiting has come for us with Mark. Don't forget God's got a part in all that. I I'm not forgetting. The sun and the rain come regardless for seeds, but a man's got to keep in touch with God. And there'd be so many things and so many people to pull Mark away. Ed, every church has its eye out for kids away from home. It's a big part of their program to find them, get acquainted with them. I think you're making mountains out of molehills. Well, I keep telling myself that, but I don't know. A few years back, we had an awful time with Mark keeping him in church. He didn't want to go, and he kept asking why he had to. Most children go through that. I don't know, we've got one at our house now. But Mark kept going, didn't he? Yes, he did. But don't think it was my reasoning with him that kept him there. 
I was quite a bit bigger than he was then. Well, has he asked anything about it since he's grown up? No, I don't think we've ever talked about it. Just kept going. You know, Pastor, I remember the first time I left home. The day I left, I found my father sitting here in this barn. We must have talked for a couple of hours. And some of the things he said to me, I'll never forget. The dignity of man. His responsibilities to his God, his country, his family and himself. Beautiful things. But I can't imagine myself saying those things to Mark. Kids have changed. I don't know that they have, Ed. And you think I ought to talk to him? I sure do. Well, I guess I've just been waiting for someone to say that to me. What'll I tell him? Times have changed considerable since my father talked to me. Times have changed, Dad, but men haven't, and God hasn't. I don't think I'll have to tell you what to say. I think you'll know. But I guess I had better go and give you the chance. Goodbye, Ed. Goodbye, Pastor, and thanks a lot. Hello, Dad. Hi, son. Wasn't it nice of Dr. Goodrich to come all the way out here like that? Sure was. Oh, Mom's fixing dinner. She said to tell you about 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Chapo, you're sure going to get mighty fat and lazy while I'm gone. I'm fixing this bridle so I can exercise it for you, Mark. I meant to do that. Let me fix it. Sure I'm going to miss taking him out every day. He's going to miss you, too. You got to watch him early in the morning, Dad. He's... Pretty frisky, then. I'll watch him. Mark? Yes, Dad? You remember that fence we built around the north field? Can't very well forget it. I guess not, but... Do you remember how we made our mistake? Yeah. We selected a post... the height that we wanted the whole fence to be. And we cut the second post to match it. But then instead of using that first post as a pattern, we used the second post to cut the third, and the third, the fourth, and so on down the line. It looked like we was going to do all right, too. Yes. It was only after we'd gotten clear around and set up that last post next to the one we started with that we saw what a great difference those little mistakes could make. <laughs> we didn't have any place to nail the top wire. Well, Mark, I think a man can make the same mistake building his life that we made building that fence. Oh, we'd have made little mistakes, but we'd never gotten this far off if we'd stuck to the pattern. And a man can have his ups and downs, but he'll never get that far off with his life if he sticks to the pattern, the pattern that God gave us, and that's Jesus. And with something as important as this is, I don't think a man should rely on himself only. He should get all the help he can. Now, sometimes I get so far off the pattern. I'm not a very good example, but, son, I'd have made so many more mistakes, gotten so much farther away, if it hadn't been for one thing, my church. Now, a long time ago, you asked me why you had to go to church. I don't recall what I told you then, but I'm sure you can see now that I wanted you to have the pattern. Well, son, we better not keep your mother waiting. You know, a pattern is important. A pattern by which we can measure decisions and deeds, a standard which can hold us true. It's as important or necessary for us as is a
compass to the captain of a ship, or the radio beam to the pilot of a plane, or a guidepost when a farmer builds a fence. Of course, young people need it. And the church is doing the best it can for them on college campuses and everywhere else. But we never outgrow or outlive our need for a pattern. In fact, when a person in the later years or middle years of life loses his way, there's something especially tragic. We need the church all the way through life. For the church, as nothing else can ever do, provides us with a pattern, keeps us mindful of it, holds it always before us. I know some people have serious questions concerning the church. Is it necessary? Is it important to be a part of it, attend it? I have a little booklet here on you and your church. In it, I've tried to answer such questions and others about the church. I'd like to send you one. If you'll take a card or letter and address it to me, the pastor, in care of this station, and on the other side of the card, right at the top, the word church, and then your name, your address, your city and state. Be sure to write them plainly, your name, your address, your city and state, and at the top of the card, write the word church, and address it to me, the pastor here of this station, and I'll see that your copy of you and your church is in the mail immediately. Jesus himself seems to have had a standard regarding the church of his day, the synagogue. Evidently, he thought it was important to be a part of it and attend it. For here in one of the Gospels is recorded this comment. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day.